Great, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, so let me start with a very simple question. So let's suppose we have two topological spaces, or uh, sort of more specifically, let's say x1 and x2 are smooth uh, four manifolds. So if you don't want to think about what that is abstractly, maybe I'll just give you some examples to keep in mind. So you could think of the four sphere, or a product of two two spheres, or maybe complex projective space. So we have some nice four-dimensional spaces. The question we'd like to ask is, you know, how do we know if they're equivalent? So uh, are x1 and x2, and let's let's say for this talk, let's say diffeomorphic. So in other words, is there some sort of smooth bijection between these two spaces? Um, and I'm going to add an extra little assumption to make the talk a little bit easier. I'm going to add the condition that these manifolds be simply connected, or their fundamental group is trivial. And if you've, um, I mean, that means every loop bounds a disk, or I mean, again, all of these examples will fit into that. So you could just keep these three manifolds in mind if you like. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. OK, let's add more things. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's say closed, actually, even, even stronger. Thanks. OK, great. So you know, a natural question you might want to ask is, these are, you know, why do we care about dimension 4? And why do we care about diffeomorphic? Why not homotopy equivalent? Why not homeomorphic? Why not some other notion of equivalence? And maybe let me just point out two, two reasons why one should focus on these two aspects. So the first is the only remaining case of the Poincaré conjecture is exactly this setting. And so let me uh, put it in a simple way, which is that if x is homeomorphic to the four sphere, so I'll write h to mean that the equivalence is just a bicontinuous bijection, uh, then x is diffeomorphic to the four sphere. So I'll write that with a d. Um, so that's the one remaining case of the Poincaré conjecture is something about dimension 4 and something about smooth structures. Um, another is very special things happen in dimension 4 that don't happen in other dimensions. So um, for instance, let me say sort of the following. So if, if n is not 4, then if we have something homeomorphic to our n, then it's diffeomorphic. So there's only one Euclidean space in dimensions other than 4. But it turns out that in dimension 4, there is lots of, lots of Euclidean spaces. So the, we have the following. So uh, there exist uncountably many uh, R4s up to diffeomorphism, or what we call an exotic R4. So there's uncountably many uh, topological spaces that are homeomorphic to R4, and they exhibit a smooth structure, but they're not diffeomorphic to R4. So there's a lot of really interesting things going on in dimension 4. Okay, So maybe that's why we'd like to study this question. And now a, a good thing we could ask is, how are we going to study this question? What kind of invariance? Do we have? So let me start with uh, sort of the most classical invariant. So we have the intersection form. And so this is going to be a symmetric unimodular bilinear form. It's just going to take values in Z. And it's going to be valued on the second homology with integer coefficients. So what is, well, if you don't remember what second homology is, you should just think this is some abelian group that's generated by surfaces. And so how is our intersection form going to work? Well, we have two surfaces. We just count the number of times that they intersect. So number of intersections. Now, maybe they don't intersect transversely, so we maybe perturb them a little bit to intersect transversely. And there is some signs that one needs to take into account, but basically we just count the number of times these intersect. OK, 
Great. So let's do uh, an example. So let's use one of our examples up here. So let's look at S2 times S2. So remember the second homology is something generated by surfaces. What are the surfaces we see in here? Well, there's, a, there's sort of a couple obvious spheres, right? There's a sphere times a point. There's also a point times a sphere. Great. So let's, OK, so well, maybe we should give this a name. Let's call it QX. So let's compute this, QS2 times S2. So in this basis, this symmetric bilinear form, just going to give us a two by two matrix. Um, great. So maybe you can help me out. So let's look at this entry here. So we want to count how many times does this sphere intersect this sphere? And the answer is one. Great. OK. And this is symmetric, so there's one here. And now we want to count to get here. We want to say maybe how many times does this sphere intersect itself? Well, it sort of intersects itself uncountably many times. So we need to perturb it a little bit so the intersection's transverse. And so how many times does this sphere times a point intersect itself? Zero, right? Because if we push it off, it's going to be at a slightly different point. And the same thing here, this is going to be zero. So this is just to illustrate this is a reasonable, you know, this is a reasonable and reasonable object that we can study. We can write it down, we can compute it for examples. Uh, maybe just to, to sort of point out that it actually has some value as opposed to just being computable. Uh, let me look at another example. Let's take two CP2s, remove two four balls, and glue them together. And it's, it's not difficult to check that, well, H2 also has rank 2, pi 1 is 0. Everything looks the same, except when we go to compute this intersection form. And we see that it is sort of a shuffling of this one. And so if you think for a second about symmetric bilinear forms. These are not equivalent as symmetric bilinear forms. And so we see that these two four manifolds are not equivalent. Not equivalent, thanks, yes. So we run into an issue, though, which is that, well, we've shown they're not diffeomorphic. But it turns out that this invariant is actually much, you know, it, it sees I don't know, it's much coarser and variant. It actually only sees the homeomorphism type, or even just the homotopy type. So in fact, all we've done is we've shown that these are maybe not homeomorphic. And so you know, we're not really any closer to our first goal of trying to you know, solve the Poincaré conjecture. Um, OK, so we, need, we might need something a little bit more refined. <laughs> So uh, what are we going to do? Let's maybe s sort of step back and understand intersection forms a little bit better um, before we try to move on to smooth structures too carefully. So let me start with the theorem of Friedman, which you know the first question about this invariant is maybe which intersection forms or sorry, which symmetric bilinear forms can we realize? And the answer, in some sense, is every single one. So every, let me say, symmetric, bilinear, and let's say non-degenerate, or sorry, let me say unimodular. So here, that just means if I make this matrix, the determinant is just plus or minus 1. Uh, so every symmetric, bilinear, unimodular form is a QX. But here, we have to add a little bit, work in a larger class of manifolds. We have to work with topological manifolds. So let me say some topological X. So it may not have a smooth structure. So that's the first fact. But what's amazing about this is this basically determines the topological type of the manifold. So again, in the setting of smooth and simply connected and close smooth four manifolds, so let me just remind you the smooth again. So if they have the same intersection form, then they're actually homeomorphic. Okay. Okay. So it's sort of capturing all the topology, but, but nothing about the differential topology. 
So let's, let's bring the smooth structure into play. So let's contrast this with the theorem of Donaldson, which tells us if we have a smooth structure, more interesting things happen. So let's say if x is smooth, and the intersection form is positive definite, so we just make this matrix, and it's a positive definite matrix, then, well, something interesting happens. The intersection form has to be diagonalizable. It has to be diagonalizable over the integers. So there's a very strong constraint coming from the smooth topology. And so a corollary that we get from this, which is quite nice, sort of as a side comment, is there are topological four manifolds that just have no smooth structure. And in fact, we get one for every, for every positive definite bilinear form that's not diagonalizable over the integers. So that's something that's hopefully illustrating the sort of distinction between topological and smooth four manifolds. Um, but it's still not helping us solve the Poincare conjecture. So maybe let me pose a question. which is basically the same question we started with, but really focusing now on the smooth structure. So, so how to distinguish smooth structure. Right, so now we have a good, you know, here's our first step. Well, we should compute the intersection form and check are these manifolds homeomorphic. We can do that very easily now. Um, but now we want to actually you know, get to the next step. We want to get this smooth structure. And so basically, the rough idea is as follows. So well, what's a smooth structure? It allows us to take derivatives. So we should really define an invariant that has derivatives built into it. So what we should do is we should just count the number of solutions to some differential equation. Right? That's something that really sees the smooth structure. Right? We should take derivatives. And well, that'll, that'll give us something. Okay. Um, so maybe sort of an example, which is nice, is the so-called Cyborg-Witten equations. And let me not say too much about them, but maybe a little bit about the structure, that these are just some nonlinear elliptic PDE. Um, and sort of what's, what's nice about these equations, uh, maybe let me try to draw, draw back to some connections in other talks we've heard about uh, this week. So for instance, sort of using knot theory, like Jen told us in her talk, um, we can actually produce lots of examples of exotic four manifolds. So, so we can produce uh, infinitely many exotic four manifolds. So sort of you know, one homeomorphism type, but infinitely many uh, smooth types, um, which is just sort of using some elementary techniques from knot theory. And then I'll point out one more thing. Uh, to tie in with Thal's talk, which is that the equations come with an S1 symmetry, or sometimes even some slightly larger nice compact groups. And so now you can try to study your four manifold using the equivariant algebraic topology of what's going on with these equations. So so can use uh, equivariant algebraic topology. 
Um, and so maybe I guess I should very quickly say um, some sort of that, that I have to do some kind of advertising. So joint, joint work with uh, Jen Hom, who talked the other day, uh, roughly says that using these cyber witten equations, uh, or you try and study these cyber witten equations, so roughly we can say that if your intersection form is positive, then there are no interesting solutions. Techniques using PDEs actually can't just structures on a lot of manifolds. And some someone needs to do something new in four manifold topology. So I'll stop there.